So we are going to do the part 2 of my Reolink POE IP camera review, the AI versions. So is it really a good system? Let's find out. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Well, I finally replaced my Swan 4K NVR system with Reolinx. A couple weeks ago, I checked out their new AI PoE cameras, including their new 12 megapixel 4096 by 3072 pixel resolution camera. And I compared this camera to their 8 megapixel 4K Ultra HD and their 5 megapixel version. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it down below. So today, I'll show you my setup in the house. Now, with this IPPoE cameras, you can set this up different ways. You can hook it up to your router directly, either in a switch or PoE switch. And you can use your Reolinx app and client software to control the cameras. These cameras are also on VIF compatible, so you can also use surveillance programs like the Blue Iris. In my setup though, I will use Reolinx 8-channel NVR, and we'll plug in the cameras from there. This is the simplest setup that you can do because I also want to stream the camera's feed to a monitor, which in my case, I used a 32-inch TV. Now, if you're new to NVRs and network cameras, the hardest part of the installation and setup would be wiring of your network cables. But you only have to do this one time. And my recommendation is to hire a professional to do it. And I will tell you that it's not even the crawling up in the attic and swimming with your fiberglass itchy insulation that is frustrating. It is drilling holes in the corner of your house and thinking that you can feed the cable and you'll be able to find it in your attic. I'll tell you right now, it is harder than you think. You have to have proper tools like a very long flexible drill bit because you're not just drilling on the eaves. But more than likely, you also have to drill through the beams of your roof, especially in the corners, which is the usual spot you want to install your cameras. I learned it the hard way and will see the battle scars in my setup. And I temporarily covered these holes with duct tape. I know, you can use duct tape for anything. I did mine about 8 years ago and I already swapped out two NVR systems. And this is the third one. And I still use the Cat5e cabling that I used then. All of the 8 cameras Ethernet cable merge here in the middle of my house. And I'm fortunate enough that I have space on top of one of our closets. This is where my NVR is located and also there is an access point of my home network. It is not easily accessible and you will need a ladder to gain access to this area. On the side, I installed the monitor and this is just a regular 32-inch TV that we haven't been using. The TV is in perfect position that we can easily see it if we are in the living room, the kitchen, and the master bedroom. Now, these streams live footage from the cameras and this is where we look when we get motion notifications from our ring cameras. Motion detected at the ring front door. Motion detected at the ring floodlight. I also hooked up a wireless handheld mouse to the NVR so that I can access and change the settings on the NVR without needing for me to get up on a ladder and use the included wire mouse. So this is my setup and now let's talk about the cameras. So I have the 12 megapixel installed in the front of the house overlooking the garage driveway. One of the things that I want to be able to do and actually did with my older 4 megapixel Zoom Reolink RLC 511 then is that I can zoom in a bit and I was able to read license plates of slow moving and parked cars in the street in front of my house. And I was able to read plates in daytime and also at night and with the infrared LEDs on. I wasn't able to do this when I upgraded to the Swan 4K and even with the Reolink's 4K PoE cameras. The infrared LEDs were just too bright that I got too much of a reflection. But with the narrow 67 degrees field of view of the 12 megapixel version and also the dispersed infrared LEDs, it is able to read plates up to 50 feet in an angle and at night. Now, if the plates are directly in front of the camera, you will still get the infrared glare. But in my setup, I turned off the infrared LEDs because I have my ring floodlight turning on at night when it senses motion. And when it is off, its infrared LEDs is enough to light up the area. So I can see clearly the license plates if any cars will try to drive in the driveway just by the lights from the floodlights and the camera in black and white mode. Now let's do a quick check on the settings in the Reolink app. 
On the main app page, you will see all your Reelink cameras like their Wi-Fi cameras and also the NVR cameras. Click on the camera you want to stream the live view. In here, you can pause the live view, mute the speaker, or take a snapshot which will be saved to your phone's album. Camera icon to record the current live view and this clip will also be stored to your phone's album. Then we have the video quality which you can choose from fluent, balanced, or full resolution. Make sure you have it in full resolution if you are manually recording the live view. You can also enlarge the screen to landscape mode. On the bottom, we have the playback which will show you the camera's recordings and you can sort out which clips you want to check out. If you want person only, for example, and you only have a few footages that you have to check. These clips will always have people in them. Remember this sidewalk because you will see in the motion zones later on that it has been blued out. If you want to download the footage to your phone, make sure first that the quality is clear, then click the download button. In here, you can adjust the video length and then download it to your phone. If you go back to the main app page and click the gear icon on the right of the NVR name, you will get to the settings. In here, you can share your NVR. Advanced settings for user management and date and time settings. You will also see the channel or camera settings. In my setup, I have a mix of different resolution, AI, and non-AI cameras. Highlight the camera you want to change the settings. In the display, you can rotate the screen or view of the camera. You can change the quality, clear which is in full resolution, ultra HD at 25 frames per second, and we have the fluent which is lower resolution. We have day and night, and you can change the mode of the camera. In recording, black and white, or color to record in full color even at night and auto which turns the camera to black and white automatically when it gets dark. We also have the privacy mask if you want to black out an area in the camera for privacy. Then we have motion detection where we can set the sensitivity from 1, the lowest, to 50. You can also set different sensitivity settings depending on the schedule that you set. Then we have motion zones and you can blue out the areas that you do not want to get notifications. As you can see, the sidewalk is blued out. But as you have seen in the recordings earlier, occasionally I will still get alerts and recordings from the sidewalk. You can use the eraser to erase the zones. We also have push notifications and if you turn this on, it will also turn on the notifications from all other cameras connected to your NVR. If you don't want notifications from other cameras, the only way to do it for now is to set the schedule. In here, I have set it to only notify me when it detects a person. But you can change this by clicking on the schedule and you can select the whole time frame and click disabled and copy this schedule to all other days. We also have camera recording which is also an all or none switch. And you can also set scheduling just like in the notifications. In here there is the alarm tab which is the motion recording schedule and you can set this to record when it detects any motion, person only or vehicle only. On the timer tab, this is also if you also want the camera to record 24-7. You can disable this so that you can save hard drive space on your NVR and just set motion recording. Then we have the audio and light setting. You can toggle on if you want the camera to record audio. And you can also set the infrared LEDs to auto which turns automatically to on at night or stay off. Time to talk about AI on these cameras. They do work pretty good on both human and vehicle detection. Also, the cameras that I got needed their firmware updated because in my case, the motion zones and the motion sensitivity doesn't work with the camera's AI. So in the first day of my setup, I was getting person and vehicle notifications even if I blew out the whole area of the camera's field of view. And also even when I lowered the sensitivity to 1, which is the lowest. The firmware update fixed all of these, except at the time of this filming, the update is only for the 5 and 8 megapixel versions, and no update yet for the 12 megapixel one. So I just grayed out the scheduling to turn off push notifications for just this camera. I'm hoping that Reolink will update this to have each camera have its own push notification switch, even if they're connected to the NVR. Also take note that the firmware update is not automatic, and you need to manually update each of your cameras. Reolink is pretty good in providing instructions on how to do it and we'll link it down below if you do have their 5 and 8 megapixel AI cameras. Finally, the Reolink app works pretty good on their NVR system. It is easy to change the settings of the cameras and as long as you set the cameras to stream in balanced or fluent, the camera loads up pretty quick. And because of their new AI, you can easily find the footage you're looking for by sorting out the recordings to people or vehicles. 
and you'll only have a few video clips to check out, instead of wasting time fast forwarding trying to find a specific clip. I also like that it is easy to download the footage to your phone, and it is in full resolution. I did have some issues downloading from the 12 megapixel version though, but the 5 and 8 versions had no issues. You can also save memory space on your hard drive just by scheduling the recordings when the camera detects people or cars, and it will not record if it doesn't detect anything. In my setup, I have my front cameras only record when it detects all motion and not recording 24-7. If you have the AI cameras in your backyard, you can just set it to record when it detects people only, saving disk space in your hard drive. Overall, Reolink's PoE AI cameras are now pretty reliable, and now you can set push notification and you'll be confident that when you get a notification that there is definitely a person or vehicle that triggered the cameras. No more hundreds of false notifications a day, and gone are the days when you get notified by swaying leaves. The only thing that I wished Reolink has added, and because I know they already have used this technology on their Argus line, is the Starlight sensor, and probably have added a spotlight too, just like the Swan Spotlight cameras. I have a feeling that they will eventually release a model with this feature pretty soon. Anyways, that's it, and any questions, comment down below. And thanks for watching, and I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click the bell notification so as to get notified when I upload product reviews like this video, product updates, comparison videos, and long-term reviews. Thank you.